hello hello guys uh here we have some few components that i want you uh, to see i will be explaining these components uh step by step i want you to understand this thing it's so important to understand all of these components but i won't be able to cover all of them i'm gonna try to cover some few anyway let's start with this one what do we have here uh this is a mosfet all right so let me tell you a short story i was fixing a board a gigabyte uh motherboard so what i did there there was uh, this mosfet and i wasn't aware so what i did was i removed this mosfet and i replaced uh, them with another normal mosfet which are these ones let me show you there we go this is alpha and omega or 407 of which it's a key channel mosfet so the mistake that i did it's not about p or a or, or n channel mosfet but i did a worse mistake this is a double mosfet this is not a single mosfet this is actually mosfet is two in one mosfet i was in a way i did this mistake and i bent the board horribly but I spoke with the owner. I admitted. I told him that's okay, bra. I did a mistake. I bent your mother port by a mistake, and as a mother, and now the port is worse. There are more things bent, even the CPUs, all those things you see. So I spoke with the guy. He said, "No, okay, fine." So what I did was I fixed another port. So I took the component from that uh, dead mother port, the one that I killed, and then I I fixed another nice machine for him, almost the same mother port. And he was happy. So I want to share this stuff with you. Let me repeat again. This is uh this is not a single MOSFET. Here we have two MOSFETs within one MOSFET. If you don't know, it's easy. You check that number twenty uh N03. Check the number there for data sheets. They will tell you on the thing. And again, if this is shorted, it's normally some pins they will be touching, they will be shorted. That's how you can check this type of MOSFET. All right, let me continue. And then here we have a P channel MOSFET. Okay, if this is shorted, it's easy. You take your multimeter. Let me show you. This is how you check MOSFET. You take a multimeter, you touch both sides like this, and you should have a reading on the multimeter. If no reading is fine because the MOSFET has a diode inside, then what you do is you reverse, you reverse the probes, use the other one here, and it should give you what? It should give you a reading. It will have a reading of around 300, 200. If it's working, 300, 400, even 500, all right? Don't take, don't use any MOSFETs less than 100 uh, uh, value. Unless if it's on the uh main power rail section but if you want but don't use that mosfet too on the switching side on vrms anyway and this is a p channel mosfet how do we check you see this four the this four digits here 4407 the last number of which is a it's an old number seven it means it is a p channel mosfet anyway let's move on what do i have here this is a big guy, a wind bond, 16 pin. This is a, 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 what do you call this? This is a BIOS chip, an old BIOS chip. I'm not, uh, yeah, they, these are old 16 pin uh, BIOS chip. So this one is dead, it just died for no reason. Uh, when I try to read the data, the information on this chip or to read the chip itself, it keeps on giving me errors, errors, errors one way. I can't read any data. I can't write anything. <sighs> yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. So it gives me that same error. It gives me an error. Uh, and I can't do a single thing. So anyway, so what you do is you, you can change uh, this chip and use another chip. There's no... There'll be, there'll be no problem and it doesn't have to be a win point you can use any chip as long as it's 16 pin same size you see the 64 that is 64 that it means it's a 64 mp so yeah this is how you check 
you can read the number there but today i can see 64 cfvig so that 64 there it, it represent this the size it represent the size of the bios chip move on here we have a tiny guy you know what is this right this is a mosfet all right it's exactly the same as the big one but this one is just a smaller a smaller size don't let this confuse you uh let me compare it with, with a bigger mosfet see how big the other one but it's same thing guys don't let the, this thing uh confuse you it's the same thing it's the same thing and, and underneath it looks like this it's the same thing and see the number there it's seven four zero eight the, the eight the fourth digit number eight you can see that it is a what an even number it means this is an n channel mosfet underneath it's like this how do you check if it's shorted you check the continuity from here to here using a multimeter if there is a continuity from here to here it means it's shorted and again when you're using a multimeter when you are when you are placing a probe from here to here there should be in there should be no reading and when you reverse your probes from here to here same point the reading because there is a diode inside if there's no reading it means something's wrong with your mosfet all right try to be short as possible there we go uh this is a chip okay let me remove the 30. this tiny guy here you know what exactly it does it takes the 3.3 and the 5 volts always and then converts it into 3.3 and 5 volts vs imagine how tiny it is let's check the they check the tiny mosfet this is a tiny mosfet but see the size of, of this chip so tiny and let's check a normal mosfet a big one see the size just compare the size of the three hope you can see the size these are all uh size this is a mosfet double mosfet this is a single mosfet and this is a chip but it acts as mosfet it's got the gate it's got everything it knows when to allow power it's more like a double mosfet as well but it's more complicated anyway guys let me continue uh, but this one here is shorted it's no physically damaged it's just shorted it's dead underneath like this hope you can see okay this is a zero ohm uh, resistor why they use zero ohm resistor it's, it's even dirty a zero ohm resistor they act as fuse if you don't have a fuse you can just put a zero ohm resistor there and it will work fine and it will work fine it acts as a fuse zero ohm resistors yeah so yeah this is it this one is it's not working it's broken meaning when you connect your prop from here your multimeter prop so when you touch here and then here uh let me show you how you test it means when you touch them like this there's no continuity you don't get any beep from your multimeter why it's because it's broken no longer allowing power to pass we have to change it these are all broken components and then here we have a diode it's even bent see this one is physically bent you can see it's bent this is a diode i've explained the diodes the diode allow power to the current to uh to move in one direction not to reverse okay how is that possible it's easy um and why do we even need to push power into one direction let's say we have a put a boost uh inverter or converter you want to boost uh, maybe 19 volts 200 volts obvious you would need a diode to push that power that's it, that it's being boosted to go forward not to go backward and end up and in your 19 volts you understand so you, you, you need to have a protection something that is forcing power to move into one direction because imagine if if that's 19 volts uh, the one that's being converted into 100 volts uh, and 
I mean, end up being mix, mixed with a hundred volts. What do you think will happen? So that's why you have to separate the power being converted from the power. Um, yeah, we have to have what diodes. But there are many applications. Even to rectify uh, the power, you, we use diodes sometimes. And you know how to check for a diode. You place two props from here to here. And then you check for continuity. If there's no continuity, it's fine. You have to reverse the, 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 the multimeter until you get the reading on one side. If there is a continuity, then this means this means the diode is dead. Here, there is a continuity and the diode is dead. As you can see as well, it's physically burnt. This is a physically burnt uh, induct. There's no continuity. Put it aside. And this is a physically burnt ceramic capacitor. I've done these videos before. This is physically burnt. I didn't use alcohol to find this uh, shorted cap. I just used my own eyes. I remember very well. As you can see, it's physically burnt. It's quite a trick. Normally, if you see them tracking, it means they are they are gone. See this one, the track. Uh, this means this is shorted. If you can take your multimeter right now and, and and place it with two probes, you will see that there is what you get a, a continuity from both ends. And this this means this capacitor is is dead. Let's talk about transistors. Here I have a transistor, a small transistor. No, this is a diode, sorry, this is a diode. A double diode. And it's physically burnt, guys. You can see one side is fine, but the other side is burnt. So this is a diode from, from um, uh, it's used on two power rails, pushing power uh, forward into one power rail. Let's say you have the 3.3 .3 coming from the motherboard, and the other 3.3 .3 is coming from the CMOS battery. And you want to push the power forward. Obviously, you need what a double MOSFET. This one is physically, is physically damaged. This is a chip. Uh, I think it's a 3.3 .3 or 5 volts. If I can tell you that is this chip, is this IC is dead? Can you believe me? Obviously, you will. This is dead. This is a bad guy. I have to throw it away. See, instead of using MOSFETs, they are now using these chips to generate 3.3 .3 and to generate fat 5 volts. No more MOSFETs, no more extra chips for controlling those MOSFETs. It's just one single thing, one single chip. This chip. This guy here. And then lastly, we have a bent uh, uh, coil. Yeah, guys. Anyway, I hope you, you learned something on, on this short video. I'm just going to stop there and uh, take care. I love you so much. Don't forget to press the subscribe button. Bye-bye.